back to the Blissful Badger. When wargaming, many people forget that there's a third army on the tabletop that really matters, and that is terrain. When you're playing, you don't want to have too little or too much terrain, or else it'll affect how the game plays. Mostly talking about Warhammer and Warhammer 40,000, but other games also have terrain rules that may or may not make the army different in how it plays. As we're working through the Crusade missions at my local game shop, I've noticed that we're getting somewhere around six or seven different games going at once. And we have three to four tables worth of terrain right now. So usually they're laid out a little bit light and it can actually sway the game on how it plays. So because of that, I decided to make some terrain. I had a piece of half inch thick XPS foam and a few pieces of packing material and I thought I have a little bit of time let's build some. So with the 10th edition Leviathan rule packet most terrain is supposed to be a mixture of 4 inch and up and 2 inch and lower and should have around 12 to 14 pieces on a board some people measured, and it's usually 4 by 6 inch, 5 by 10 inch, and 6 by 12 inch terrain right now for the footprint. So I wanted to make stuff that would fit within those dimensions, even if they weren't exactly those dimensions. I also knew that since I was using extruded foam, that that taller buildings would be better suited for the material. The lower ruins or wall sections, things that are less than two inches, could definitely be made out of other materials. So I had a piece of two foot by four foot green XPS and a piece of pink foam, and I figured that that would be enough to make one to two tablefuls of taller buildings. Anyone who is actually on the second floor or higher can actually get the plunging fire rule, which doesn't always happen in a game. I laid out a template so that I could get the windows in roughly the right spot every time. I made sure that one side was longer than the other so that I had an attachment point for the other wall. I went with one inch wide and one and a half inch tall windows and I set them half of an inch off of the floor. For the initial three I made it so that they did not have windows on the bottom floor but then afterwards I made a new template that had windows on the bottom floor and if I wanted to block off line of sight I could easily add a piece of cardstock as a sheet of plywood and some cut up popsicle sticks as two by fours. So with my template made, it was time to start cutting the foam. When you have a sharp edge from the manufacturer, you definitely want to keep that as the base. And then I used a square so that I could make sure that the side cuts were as accurate as I could make. Changing out the blade on your knife makes the cutting easier, and doing three or four passes, scoring it each time further down, will definitely make it an easier cut. I also rolled some rocks that I found outside along the surface to add a little bit of texture. If we're going for a concrete look, we're not going to have very much grit anyway, especially at the scale that we're looking at. But I did want to show small impacts and erosion. After cutting out the windows, I had the overall shape and design of each piece fairly set. When it came to gluing the pieces together, I decided that hot glue would be the best option. 
I used a card box that I store my magic cards in to keep the right angles straight and also to keep a platform that is three inches tall for each of the floors to go on. After gluing the pieces in place, I went back and filled glue into every corner and used an old paintbrush to smooth it out. This made sure that every connection point had two or three times as much glue and should provide a much stronger bond. Then it came to weathering. I cut out large chunks all over the place so that there was no actual smooth edge on these pieces. If this is a war-torn city, they're going to have some damage. Some buildings have more damage than others, and I went to town on these. So I finally get all of the things built, and I have this huge pile of offcuts, window cutouts, and shavings. And that means they all go into a bucket for later. Now that I have the pieces weathered and glued, it was time to paint. Now, I was building these for my game shop, and we have an event coming up on Saturday. So instead of using a paintbrush, which totally could work, instead I purchased a spray gun. So this is the first time I've used one of these spray guns, and there was a little bit of a learning curve, but overall, I really like how it goes down. So the first coat was of pavement. This gave a nice dark color to these pieces of terrain, and was a nice undercoat for everything beyond that. From there, I added elephant gray, and then granite gray as a zenithal. After that, I added a little bit of a red tint to the floors, and a little green around the basing to give a little hint of moss and other growth. After I had this, I decided to do a wash of half brown and half black, and I went six parts water to one part paint, and I think it was a little bit too dark still. So, although you can still see all of the other colors that I've done in the previous steps, the wash definitely muted it down. I would have liked it if it had stayed a little bit brighter. So overall, I have 21 pieces of terrain I built, and this should be a good one and a half to two tables worth. So the game shop should now have enough for the number of games being played. Subscribe if you haven't so that you don't miss any future videos. I also want to thank my patrons and supporters for making these videos possible. And until next time, I hope you find your bit of bliss.